So are you asking the wrong question about your money? Here's the reality. Any question that starts with the three words, should I buy, it is simply going to turn into a, a, a sales pitch where you're, you're getting told nothing more than what you want to hear rather than perhaps what you need to hear. Don't you think that's the case, Zach? That is, yeah, that is absolutely the case. And we do get that question a lot. Mm -hmm. Should I buy, insert something, gold, crypto, you know, the, the latest hot stock pick, what have you. And that really, you know, that's one of a three-part question. That's true. And that's the end question of the three, if you will, also, because you're missing the other two. You, and, and, and that is very true. And, and so, but far too often, that's how people start the conversation. So in this segment here on dollars and cents, we're going to talk about what those other questions are that you should be asking before you ever get to the should I buy question. So welcome on into the program. This of course is dollars and cents, where we help you make sense out of all of life's decisions involving your dollars, including ultimately should I buy something? But there's a host of other questions that you probably want to answer first before you get to that point. We're one of Central Florida's longest running radio programs coming to you on a host of radio stations throughout the Central Florida region. Also a top 25 financial planning podcast as well. So make sure you check us out on your favorite podcast platform or our YouTube channel. Any trouble finding us on any of those platforms, feel free to go to our website at nelsonfinancialplanning.com where you can find the icons, click on them. They'll connect you directly to the channel on that particular platform. While you're there, if you're interested in making an absolutely free, no obligation consultation with us to maybe help you find out what the questions are that you need to be asking about your finances. Well, just fill out the contact us form and we'll be happy to sit down and have a conversation with you. My name, of course, is Joel Garris, certified financial planner, certified financial fiduciary at Nelson Financial Planning, where we got a team of folks, all of whom are certified financial fiduciaries, much like the guy sitting to my left, Zach Keister, that stand ready, willing, and more than able to help help you improve your life with a successful and cost-effective financial plan. So so the, the should I buy question, Zach, that, that really is like a what question. And, and, and the reality is there, there's some why questions and some who questions that you kind of need, need, need to answer before you even get to the should I buy question. Yeah, absolutely. The, that just seems to be like the last question you should be asking. Yeah. First of all, if you want to go back to step one, you back to the why. What's the goal? Sure. What's the purpose? Are you trying to leave a legacy? Are you trying to just retire and be comfortable? You know, that's step one is why am I doing this? What's my goal? Right. No, that's no question at all. Because, and look, I mean, we, we get it, right? I yeah. mean, the, the, the reality is that uh, you see so many advertisements every just, day. I mean, well, you watch one Super Bowl. Right. And then. Well, correct. Yes. And, and if you've been watched the Super Bowl two years ago, it was all those crypto <laughs> ads of all those guys that are now getting sued because they were promoting what you should buy and not getting to the to the real question. But certainly we get it because it is so pervasive out there. Um, and, and that really is the, 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 the focus about. Uh, most of those questions that, that, that get asked these days. Yeah, and it's just in your face constantly as yeah. well. Just ads for all of these different investments, and they typically, unfortunately, kind of skew um, kind of an action needed. Sure. If you will act now, this right. is, you know, limited time offer, you know, so that tends to kind of skew folks into thinking, am I missing something out? You know, the, the fear of missing out is definitely real when it comes to a lot of these different products. Well, it, 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 correct. And it's new, this new that. And, and unfortunately, probably the worst purveyor of that is the financial services industry mm -hmm. in and of itself, mm -hmm. because, and I've long shared this with, with, with folks that listen to the radio program here on a regular basis. 
business. But the, 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 the industry is very good at rolling out products right when that interest in buying them is very high. The problem is they certainly don't have established track records like uh, the 100-year 100 100 history year. That, that the mutual fund industry has. And uh, they, they often will, will just lead to sort of a, a, a scattergram of different investments that you have inside your portfolio that really aren't uh, working particularly well together. I guess at the end of the day, Zach, there's, there's not enough, I guess, planning or mm -hmm. deliberation out there in terms of what needs to be done. Sure. It's, it's like going and picking the rail car before you put the track on for the rail car to go on. It's just, I, I want this brand new rail car and I've got it. Um, well, I don't know where I'm quite going with it because I don't necessarily have any track, but that's kind of the thought process, if, we, if you will. Yeah, just tons of products spewing out every which way again with the advertisements and that sort of stuff, but not much planning right. involved with that. It's just, here's our new product, um, not so much on how it's going to involve you and how it's going to navigate within your life. Well, and of course, by the time everybody is, is talking about, or by, time, by the time it's getting that, that heightened level of advertising, mm -hmm. Uh, chances are the, 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 the ship is already set. Absolutely. The performance I, is already high. I have not been here for that long, but I've been here long enough to know that that is certainly the case with most things. Correct. It's just, you know, by the time that it makes the mainstream media and folks are pumping it up and saying, you need to own this, it's probably a little too late. It, that would be, there's, there's history and history upon history for for that. So so let, let's talk about, you know, kind of what, a little bit more about kind of what, the, the, the focus really should should be and, and I guess it starts with you know look wh why do, why are we saving money in the first place why do we have investments in the first place and I think once we start to think about that then we start to get to the questions that we should be asking ourselves yeah and then be able to paint kind of a roadmap of like you said why do I own this why do I want to own this what's my legacy or am I just trying to retire or what have you and then once you get that step down, then come a little bit further into some more why questions. And then finally, at the very end, end up at the what should I own? What's going what's gonna to work to make me accomplish my goals? So, so to get a little bit more specific, let's say you're approaching retirement. Okay, the conversation comes up in terms of need for income, right? So, mm -hmm. so how much income do you need? Uh, what's it going to take to kind of cover those those normal expenses? That's where we that's where we really kind of get into that whole budgeting conversation mm -hmm. and kind of what that what that picture looks like. Yeah, absolutely. So once you have then made your establishment of here's what I'm trying to do, here's where I'm trying to get at, make the plan. That's the critical step too that often gets missed and that's highly invaluable. You've got to have the plan itself. So now you've got, here's what I want to do. And then you go to step two of here's where I want to go and here's how I'm going to get there. And then you arrive at the, what should I own? What do I need to own to, you know, be able to accomplish my goals in retirement? Well, and I think, Zach, that really does get us sort of to the key takeaway in this particular segment of the program. And, and, and that is, look, there, there is a difference between being product oriented in the questions that you ask and being goal oriented in terms of creating a financial plan. And you really have to be much more on the goal oriented side of things in order to have a successful plan that's going to kind of weather whatever the headlines might uh, might be that come our way over the next decades. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's way more important to look at the aspects of where am I going? What am I trying to do? You know, those variable things, those variable finds, find the variables find the plan, construct the plan. And as we would mention, you know, have a chat with a fiduciary about that, about that plan, about your goals, where you're trying to go. And then, like we've been saying, arrive at what you want to own last. 
fair second cake take key takeaway Zach, that you just mentioned there make sure you're taking the time to really talk to somebody that's certainly key um, and, and to give yourself the opportunity to really help to answer those more goal oriented questions that's certainly how every new client conversation in our office starts with really a conversation it's not about how, what do you have what do you own what's this what's that it's really more a, a, a conversation about what are we trying to accomplish here and then that leads to some of the que other questions that you should be asking but it bottom line it starts with being goal oriented on those questions not product oriented we're going to take a break and return here on dollars and cents with joel garrison zach keister of nelson financial planning